Hi, it's Susan at Seaside Stitches and it's lovely to be with you again. Um, I do appreciate that uh, some of you keep coming back so thank you for that and thank you if you subscribe. And I just want to say what I thought I was going to do this morning is just finish this dress. I'll just show you. Um, it's just this dress which is the Yasmin dress from Sinclair Patterns. It's all but finished. I just didn't have time to finish the ends of the sleeves by putting the cuffs on because they were slightly long and I didn't want to mess it up just because I was going on holiday. So um, everything else is finished. It's got the frill on. I'll put pictures in afterwards once I have finished it. So I was going to do that first, but now I'm not quite sure because I've discovered that there is um, an action, a, 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 I can't think what the word is. Anyway, it's a YouTube event which is drawing attention to Alzheimer's and dementia and it's being run by Michelle Sows again and um, she's based in the States. She's doing a full month of collaborations with a different person each day I believe and they're going to produce something but the main thing is to do it in purple. So in the UK we have the Alzheimer's Society, I think in the US it's the Alzheimer's Association, I may be wrong, um, but Michelle is based in the US, she has a, a video that she's done that talks about her dad and their experience of him with dementia. Um, Alzheimer's is a form of dementia, it's not a different thing. Um, dementia, there are many different types of dementia but Alzheimer's is the most common one or the most commonly known or commonly diagnosed one. So um, my parents both did have dementia um, and I'm not going into that bit now. What I'm going into is I need, it is now the 11th of September and I need to have finished a garment or maybe more than one garment in purple before the 30th so that I can enter this. And I'm not certain, I can't verbalise what the hashtag is, but I will put a little, under here. I will put a message down here of what it is and I will write it in the description box below. Um, I think there are some prizes, but that's not what I'm doing it for. I will put a little bit more about our experience with my dad and how the Alzheimer's Society in the UK was so helpful to us. <clears throat> had they not had their website that had so much explicit material on it, and fact sheets we would have been drowning and um, the fact that we managed to do um, a power of attorney for health and well-being or health and welfare was the saving grace of us making sure our parents both got absolutely the best care that we could make sure that they got and because we could override when they said, well, what does he want? Well, how on earth can he tell you in this state? So anyway, I'm not going to get into that. So I have realised that I do have, because also I was only going to work from my stash from now on for a little while, because obviously we're having to, um, well, economise just so from my stash. Unfortunately, in my stash, I have a good couple of metres of this. I'm not quite sure what it is, polyester crepe or something. Um, it's a woven, it's a beautiful colour and purple is my favourite colour. The purples and the lilacs, all in that. Um, so, what I had been going to make next was the sagebrush top. Friday Pattern Company's sagebrush top which I just had printed and came the day before we went on holiday. So that was what I was going to do. But I was going to make it out of different coloured ginghams, different sections of it in different colours, inspired by the wonderful Alison at So Like Dotty. Um, and when I said I was only going to sew from my stash already, I had been naughty. Um, but I have other... Um, plans for this for whatever's left of these for some fundraising events so yes I've been naughty but it's a few separate meters of gingham and I was on holiday 
um, and we can all do that, can't we? We can mitigate all our naughtiness by whatever. So all I have to do now is trim off. Now I cannot remember, and of course I was going to jot it down and hadn't done. I have to take off something like one inch and seven eighths on each sleeve. But I will re-measure all that because they are too long to put into the cuff. If I take too much off, I have enough fabric to make a longer cuff. So I'm not worrying about this. And I can't wait to wear it. I'm really pleased with it. It fits beautifully. Um, I may have to give it a couple of weeks before I do wear it, given that I have been on holiday. <laughs> and you know what that's like. Okay, so that's that. And I'll be back with you later. So thank you for watching. See you in a bit. Bye for now. It is a Sinclair pattern and it's called the Yasmin dress. It goes together beautifully. I am going to put a... Um, I filmed together of some of the making of it. I haven't filmed it all, but I did alter the skirt instead of it being one that just skims from the waist to over my hips. I didn't want one of those, so I've made it <laughs> with the um, think the simplicity pattern that I often use, something like double eight seven eight. But I'll put the thing on, and obviously same sleeves as usual with the Harper cardigan cuff. But the sleeve from that whatever the simplicity pattern is that I'm talking about. Uh, but this time I put the skirt on from that pattern as well. So I, the skirt normally comes up here. I chopped off the top, made, made sure where the waistline was, matched it all up and then I made it into a skirt, a tighter skirt. I wanted one more fitted and I also wanted a ruffle on the bottom. So I have a ruffle on the bottom. Now this is not a step that's mentioned on the instructions, but I'm just explaining what I'm doing. Because this facing would not stop rolling back on itself, uh, and I was going to get a really lumpy back of my neck, I've just gone over it um, just with a big zigzag, but stayed within the seam allowance just to keep it flattened. I tried pressing it, it pressed from the other side, but not this side. So that's all I'm doing at this point. So that just needs a press now. And then to be turned to the wrong side. Because these dots are quite a tangle with the multiple pattern, I'm going to take my time with this. I've got five pleats to make, five pairs of dots on each side of the front bodice. And this is the left side of the front bodice, as I'm going to look at it. And then um, I've also got, moving up the page, I've got these pairs of dots at the shoulder seam as well. So given that I'm working to the red, <laughs> there are three, there's kind of a purple, a wine colour and a reddish colour. And I'm working on the reddish colour. So just having to find those, <laughs> it's going to take a bit of sorting out through the lines of where my pattern lines are. But it's not a problem, you just need some time to do it. And then this strange little, looking like a, a railway track or a level crossing, that's going to be a fold line to fold the facing in. So I've got that to sort and these are the seam lines in all the different colours of which size sits where. But that's not too difficult because it's a standard um, seam allowance and it just looks more complicated than it is but it needs me to go and get 
a nice cup of hot chocolate before I start. <laughs> So the back has already had the facing, the binding attached just on the back neck and then on the front, I think Alan's just probably going to come in then, on the front where the gathers are, you've made the gathers and then you wrap round this piece of facing round here but as you can see I've made a little bump so I'm going to unpick that and then redo that, but not right now. I'm just going to attach the other side and see how I get on with that. Um, but it's coming on well, really. On this second side that I'm doing, which turns out to be it's going to be my right side of the bodice front. But I thought I had done these um, five pleats quite beautifully, really. I'd, uh, I'd, they don't look very beautiful, but I thought I'd been quite specific about joining the dots. And now I'm just going to turn it over and show you. That isn't the case. So I've slipped up somewhere, so I'm just going to redo that. Okay. This is the Sinclair pattern Yasmin dress that I'm making. I've completed the bodice. Some of it is only sewn um, temporarily and here because this fabric is quite bouncy it is a French terry and if you watch Karina on lifting pins and needles she suggests don't use French terry for it but uh, Sinclair patterns say it can be a second choice and these micro pleats are very bouncy in this fabric so they don't hold the shape so just to be clear when I'm making the decision on how I alter the armhole I've just given a, a basting zigzag stitch across to hold them in place to get an idea of where they would actually fall or not if I alter the armhole and on that side you can see they're much looser they're just freer they're kind of hardly you're hardly aware they're there but I just wanted to make sure I'm not taking too much armhole off just because it appears to be baggy You've got quite a nice feature in the centre. Let me just lift it. Right. So this bit of the bodice, you actually you actually stitch in the ditch to the facing that's kind of a grown-on facing, and then you add your two pieces of waistband. And because it's French terry, it's not looking very crisp there. But I'm not bothered about that. That. They also suggest that you can wear the waistband is with some something with some structure so that this doesn't just all go willy-nilly wherever it wants to. Um, and, you know, anyone has a problem with insects, maybe you're not going to like this video. <laughs> so this pattern has quite, a, you can have a circular, well, almost half a circle skirt, or you can have a gathered skirt and the skirt pattern comes out as really quite wide um i've actually cut the kind of extra lot i don't know which one have i done i've cut this what us 14 which is our uk 18 and stroke large so i've done the second kind of large they've got extra extra small extra small 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 medium medium large large extra large extra large so there are diff different variations with it within the bands so in the large you can grade easier from one to another anyway i'm not going into all that but when i put this on my fabric i thought i really do not want such a wide hanging skirt from my waist and from a very nipped in waist so i've been looking at other options and what I remembered was I have this book. Now, this is a book that I really put this in a bundle for me for the first Christmas that I'd started, that I'd got back into sewing. And there's all sorts of amazing stuff here. This person who wrote this, Jennifer Taylor, was in the second series of The Sewing Bee. And 
I gave it quite I gave it a skim I had a good look through it I thought I had grasped a lot of the um, practices in it but this is really relevant now to what I'm attempting to do now which is change the skirt that I'm going to add to this dress so I'm not self-drafting one at this point this is simplicity 8875 that I talk about quite a lot and this is the over over the top wedding guest dress that I made from it but this so I'm cutting the pattern down to the waist rather than having this on it and doing all my measurements for how I'm going to make that fit to this bodice so as I said it's quite a nipped in waist and I'm doing measurement after measurement and I've still given myself some leeway because the last time I cut this skirt pattern out the dress was bordering between a 12 and a 14 and it was really tight on me and very little stretch in this so I'd already added a little strip to the side of it to make it into a 16 I don't know if you can see that little strip but that's what I've done there so now I've just been laying out the fabric the decision I've made is I want this to be relatively short but that's because I want to put a frill on it. Now this is going to look strange, but to test whether this thicker jersey would look okay with the gathers in it, I gave it a try. I didn't want to use some of the original just as a mock-up, but I did have this spare piece of relatively thick cotton jersey. Well, um, it's got a lot of stretch in it. It's a, I don't know what the composition is. So I've done this little mock-up of a frill. I will have enough on of the fabric to make a relatively substantial frill. So it would be a bit more kick pleaty. <laughs> so my measurements are I've shortened this, I have now just laid it out, looking for the best way, the best composition I can find. I don't want to have to match it all because it's ridiculously patterned it's not symmetrical um, so I've been playing about and it's, it's taken me quite some time this morning but I really don't mind that I like the working things out I like the trying to understand would this work with this if if I change this do I need to get this right I measured all sorts of things of should I just make a shorter version of this um, and then add a frill to that, but I still don't want all that gather from this. Um, but I don't want a pencil skirt either. So I'm just looking for oops, the best of both worlds, really. Now the decision I've made is that I will cut this piece now from this side and carry on working down this side. I know sometimes it works out better for you getting more out of your fabric if you turn across from each other you turn it in and you get you put a piece on that side and a piece on that side but actually it's not going to give me much in the middle um, I still might do that I'm still working on it but these are what I mean I, I think it through quite a long time before I do anything but as I've kind of placed things about that once I've cut this out, I can move this piece in a little bit more because the back is a little bit wider at the bottom. And then that gives me, so that would take off similar length to that. And then this side, would be able, I would be able to choose which long sleeve, which sleeve I do. Cut them separately, mirror them, obviously, rather than have two the wrong size, two the wrong arm. And that still gives me quite a lot to do a decent frill on the bottom. So that's what I'm just fiddling about with. And this is the way I sew and work things out. I'm not someone who has to start one thing, get it to completion and, oh, I've made this and I've made this, I've made this. So this is the front skirt piece cut out. I'm just, um, Add in the pattern so that you can see which one I'm talking about.
So, um, this had been a bit, bit, a bit big on the seams, and so when I reduced it, I realised afterwards I'd reduced it far too much. I'd uh, misremembered what size I'd done. So now, this is only a tiny, tiny seam. Ooh. Just going to overlock it. I'm really pleased with the effect I've got now with the frill on this jasmine dress. Um, looks like it goes on or up forever, but um, yes. Yeah, so I'm just sorting out some sleeves for it. What I've chosen for it is the one from the simplicity pattern that I use all the time for these. Um, I don't know. I call them the seventies sleeves. And then I add the Harper cardigan cuff to the bottom of it, which I've got plenty of fabric left. With the bagginess of making it an area that will accommodate the bosoms. <laughs> so instead of actually having bust darts, that's what's supposed to happen. Now, because this is French terry, the micro pleats are not extremely micro. micro and to me it's not a real success so i would rather have just gathered them i think just put the gathers in like i tried to do with the well i did do with the westcliff dress um yes but also what's happening is because of this pattern and allowing for this excess in this area the sleeve is quite wide sorry the width from the neck from the v at the neck to the side of the armhole is quite wide now i could just uh, curve it in which is what i am going to do really but some of that uh, excess is due to the fact that these are meant to pull in as they pleat and accommodate the breasts oh the busts so um Yes, anyway, as I tightened up this other sleeve, as I made it come in and in and in, before I actually cut this, the armhole, it started to, when I tried it on, it started to pull away the facing. There's, it will make this V-neck gape. So I'm a bit stuck with what to do. I'm wondering if I should do, actually sew down here as if they are pin tucks for a little while so that holds them in place better not catching the um, facing of course it's very strange it's a grown on facing and then you also turn in the tops of the shoulders underneath it which is a bit difficult to explain from here but it creates it creates this thing <laughs> so um, I don't want to destabilise this v-neck because it looks really good and it's nice and flat on me. So I'm a bit at odds with what to do. And this would happen even if I put on the correct sleeve that goes with the pattern. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just backwards and forwards on what to do. I may put some interfacing on the back, adhesive interfacing to hold these pleats micro pleats in place at the back i don't know what i'm going to do yet i'm still wondering so that's where i'm up to but it's just uh, it's all part of the excitement isn't it so i may not be taking it on holiday i don't know i've only got two days left and i've got some work to do tomorrow and friday so we may not be going i may not be taking it but it's a shame because i really like it there's no way i would wear it sleeveless and um Unless I've got something that would go under it. I tried it with a shrug on the top. But because of all this kind of paraphernalia. And it's not. If it was straight across. It would be uh, a contrast for the shrug. But it's just too many different layers and things happening. So that doesn't work. But anyway. I'm on to it. Okay. That's it for now. Just popping on to show you that. The frill is on the dress. I think I've already shown a picture of this. I've just been double gathering the cuffs with some 
basting stitches just done them in two colours so that you can I can see the pink and the brown and then I will gather those up I've done the other side and then gather them up and attach them to the cuffs which I'm hoping if I've got to get this that if I attach them with that side against the sleeve when I turn that I will get the butterfly and not this I'm not that keen on this one and with this one again not to be having that on the top on the front when I turn them I should get the blue the blue one and the blue one should be flying in the same orientation as it is on the sleeve. But that may go wrong yet. <laughs> so let me put that back so that I do that. Okay, so all I need to do now is attach those cuffs sort that gathering out and attach it to the cuffs sew it and then try it on so that's all I need to do now gather that um, okay so that's that part but now I think I am making another Bondi t-shirt in purple this time and I did buy this possibly to make a Westcliff dress. I am already making a Westcliff dress, but I'm also thinking that I may repeat one of these. I really like this dress. This is the Yasmin, I will put some pictures up. It's the Yasmin dress, or most of it is, from Sinclair Patterns. And another thing for Sinclair Patterns, did you know that on Mondays and Tuesdays, they usually bring out, or Tuesdays, they usually bring out a discounted pattern for that week sometimes they leave it longer and sometimes they bring out one or two so normally on a Monday or Tuesday it's worth checking the Sinclair patterns website 